Good morning. As your pastor, I have to make decisions. And you guys aren't any different. Every day, every single day, we come to this fork in the road. Whether it's something little or huge, whether it's trouble or to glorify God, whatever it is, we come to a fork in the road. Now, this is what I call a decision. And we have free will. I want to explain free will for a minute before we get started. Free will is a choice. God gives you the opportunity and instructions on how he would like you to go. But you have free will. He does not control our choices. And this path that we come, we're walking down, and we come to a fork in the road, what I want to talk to you about is how we handle it. Because, boy, we jump to conclusions right away, and uh, our human spirit kind of takes over. We like easy, we like comfort, we like money. We want to feel good, we want pleasure, we want happiness. And when you're making these decisions, this stuff all influences which way you're gonna go. Josh, put this up on the screen, will you? John 14, six. Everybody knows this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. That's what we're going to talk about. You come to this fork in the road, and he wants you to go one way. How do you decide which way that is? And this, this is everything from our, I shouldn't say our wives, going to a closet and deciding what shirt to wear this morning. You know, I, I like to poke fun at the shirts that I wear. Walk up to the closet, slide the thing open, Pick the cleanest, dirty shirt. You know, you guys, you guys know what that's on. See which one's got the least amount of wrinkles. Now, don't go running down the hall and telling my wife she's no good at doing laundry. That's not what I meant by that. What do you want to wear today? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to have lunch? Who do you want to visit? What team do you want to win? Every single decision has a fork. Now, some forks are good and bad, wrong and right, easy and hard. Some fo forks aren't even that easy to figure out. Uh, vanilla or chocolate? There's no right or wrong here, that's a preference. You come to that kind of fork, you're simply just making a preference. I'm a chocolate guy, look at me. My wife's a vanilla girl. We have discussions. This is a fork in the road for us. When you got up this morning, you decide to go to church or not? It's a fork. What shirt do I wear? What shoes do I wear? If you only have one pair of shoes, that's not an issue. Then you have an issue whether you should buy another pair of shoes. Another fork. Do I have the money for that? Fork. Every single choice we make we should be asking for guidance. Who do you turn to? Men are not very good at asking for directions. We all know that, right? And wives don't, oftentimes don't want to ask their husbands. So you go to a close friend, uh, somebody I, I call wise counsel. I have people that are called wise counsel. And I go to them, and they're, some of them are outside of the church. They're part of the church, the one universal church. Who do you go to? Another fork in the road. Who do you tell? And, and you, you want to talk to the ones that are going to give you a favorable answer, right? Because we want our own way. Instead of actually doing what Scripture says to do. Jesus is the way. Let's start right there. Josh, put up Proverbs uh, 3.6. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Should this not be the first place you go? How often do we do it? It says right there we're supposed to. Wise counsel. I want you to think that if you have uh, chosen this Christian lifestyle, I like to call it a discipline, the Holy Spirit comes to live in your heart. Do you realize or can you fathom the fact that the creator of everything is inside of you and is willing to help you make decisions? He lives inside of you. The wisest counsel ever, the creator of everything, God Almighty, is with you. And how often do you ask him? We, we love to go to wise counsel. I have this 88-year-old farmer. Now, this guy's wise. And, of course, he's so wise that he says, well, have you prayed about him? Do we start there? The person that I think is wise is telling me, have you sought wise counsel? Fork in the road. What do you do first? Who do you ask? Who do you talk to? I want to I show you a picture of a fork in the road. Josh, put, put up my image and just leave it up there for a little while. That ain't it. There you go. I want you to look at this fork in the road. This, this, is, this is life right here. One appears to go slightly downhill. And it's smooth, and it's pretty wide. It's easy. If you were out for a hike, this would be a no-brainer to me. The other one appears to go uphill. It's got some roots in it. It's not going to be easy to walk. This is life right here. And you know, all of your friends, everything that you've known, is slightly downhill in that nice wide path. They're all down there, they're cutting up and they're having fun. You would immediately go there. Those are your friends. Those are your old ways. You found happiness with them. Joy, pleasure. It's easy. And up at the top of the hill over there are some of your Christian friends. And they've told you before, you know, you shouldn't do this, and you probably should work on this. Which way are you going to go? And why are you going to go that way? Down that, that slope over there, there appears to be money. And uphill over there, you know that's going to be hard. There's work involved. You don't, you don't see the things you want up there, but you see the things that you want on this easy downhill slope. Who are you going to ask? Are you even going to stop and think about it? And you get this little voice in your head that says, go up the mountain. How long are you going to think about it? You're being guided by the creator of the universe. Everything. The one that has all power, all knowing, all goodness. Your best interest at heart is telling you to climb the mountain. But everything's easy in the other path. You know, maybe I can climb the mountain tomorrow. Life's good, right? This is everyday choices right here. Picture in your mind what's just over that slope right there that goes downhill. And picture in your mind what's up there at the top of the hill that you really can't see. This unknowing, right? You've been on the other path before. You're being guided to go uphill. And you're being told to climb this mountain. And you don't want to. 
things are things are good I don't know what's going to be up there and it's it's a hard hike you know I came out here for pleasure right we all want pleasure just wanted to go for a little hike just trying to get away and ease my mind and your mind's not being eased because the creator of everything that's living inside of you is telling you to take the hard path it's not easy nobody said Christianity was easy if you've come to know Christ because you want easy well you're not reading the same book I'm reading uphill is God the mountain of God do you actually want to go up there you know when you climb a mountain any cl mountain climbers in here no, no that's easy I can say whatever I want nobody will send me an email telling me I did that wrong when you when you go uphill when you're climbing something up and you slip you grab onto something right it's not too bad you can recover when you're going downhill and you're going pretty fast that's how we live our life and you trip you are going for a ride you will tumble you will barrel roll until you are back to the bottom of the mountain again uphill's not easy but there's roots to grab you lose your traction a little bit and slide down a little bit but when you're actually headed downhill and you fall now last week I think I wanted you all to have this image of me falling slow motion disaster it's hard to recover when you are headed downhill and you fall but it's not too hard to regroup when you slip going uphill this is what happens to us we're on this nice easy path we want easy and God's telling us to come seek me on top of the mountain and we don't want to it's not easy I don't know what's up there do you actually want to come face to face with God Almighty because you're afraid of what he might say to you he's not harsh he's a parent he's a loving parent everybody in years past has got this stigma about the Old Testament how it's like like God's just waiting for you behind a bush to make a mistake he's gonna nail you punishment right don't read it that way read it as a parent I'm pulling you back away from the fire because I love you he has your best interest at heart and if you knew what was on top of the mountain of God you'd go there but we got this nice easy wide path that we are complacent with being on trying my best uh, God forgives me whatever I do uh, yeah I'm going to go to heaven and God's telling you to climb the mountain of God are you going are you trying are you actually seeking him we like easy on top of the mountain you can see beauty you can see kingdoms you realize that the devil took Jesus on top of a mountain and let him look at the kingdom from on top of the mountain you can see the kingdom this is where God's at put your light on top of a hill so everybody can see it this is where good things are and he wants us there he's calling us there it's not easy to get there it's uphill and it's rocky but this is where all the good stuff is going downhill is a disaster Josh put up uh, Psalm 37 23 and 24 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast out, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. You realize that Jesus is holding your hand while you're going up the mountain? He's probably not when you're going downhill. He's taking you by the hand. He's leading you. You come to a fork in the road. You ask him what to do. He will take your hand. You ever, you ever walk with your kid down the sidewalk and they're playing on the curb, right? You're playing, they're playing on the curb and they're jumping off and they're jumping back on. And you've got them by the hand. We got any little kids in here? You got them by the hand and you're walking with them like this and you're letting them do it, right? They're jumping off, and you, you keep holding their hand, and, and when they go to stumble, you actually pull it up. You ever jer jerked on your kid's arm? Pull it up. Get back up here, you know. This is Jesus helping you up the mountain. He's got you by the hand. You will not be utterly cast out. We do this. We walk kids along, and no matter what they do, they're trying not to step on a crack, or they're jumping over a puddle, and we've got them by the hand, and we're helping them. We will lift them up. Now, don't think I'm a child abuser. Abby's okay, right? You lift them up, and you can actually carry them across and set them back down again. Their arm didn't come out of socket. It's all good. I can't be the only person that walked their kids this way. You, you got them. Just hold on to my hand. I got you. And when they go to go the wrong way, you pull them, you lift them, you guide them. You understand what this is saying? The creator of all lives inside of you and is directing your path and he will hold you by the hand. And we tug away, we pull away. Now some of you probably got kids that have done that before. Abby was a pretty good puller. Chelsea was a pretty good puller. She was all wiry, you know, all skinny and wiry and everything. Jeremiah 6.16. Put that up, will you? This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroad and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel the path and you will find rest for your souls. Even though it looks hard, he's got you by the hand, he wants you to go that way, he will give you rest. This is called the Sabbath. He will give you the rest that you need for your soul because this is not an easy journey. This is not an easy path. What do you want? When you come to that fork in the road, what are you actually after? Your old friends are down there and there's money down there and there's pleasure and there's peace and oh, they're fun, right? We've all had this group of friends, they're just fun. I hung with them for years and years and years. You're gonna abandon this to go up this path that you're not really sure what's up there. But God's telling you to do it. You're going to obey him? You know, it's not so much being obedient to him, but are you going to even ask him? Are you going to seek his guidance? He is the wisest person you can seek counsel from. Living inside of you, trying to tell you what to do, and you reject that, and you'll actually go to people and seek out the answer you want. We can Google anything, right? WebMD tells me all kinds of stuff. But I know I shouldn't be eating candy every day. Somebody said, you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? You know what my response was? This is just hilarious. We should probably go offline. No, I'm, I'm kidding you. Two of everything. Just like that. When I know in my head, God's saying, how about some celery, dude? <laughs> I don't like celery. Well, you might want to try it. 
It's easy to go down that path that's wide and smooth, a little downhill. I am a downhill kind of guy. But we know what's down there. We've been there before. We get used to it. We get complacent. When God tells you to do something, you don't want to do it. You know what else you don't want to do is you don't want to abandon all those friends that you can see right down there. Those are my friends. And God's telling you to go the other way. But God, my friends, turn left. But God, turn left. But God, are you at least saying, but God? Are you talking to him? Are you asking for his guidance, take you by the hand and lead you? Do you realize what is at the top of the mountain of God? You know, we're all happy with being at the base of the mountain. We like it here, right? Last week I asked you, you think you're right where God wants you? Well, I'm at the base of the mountain and I, I look up. I want to read you something a friend of mine wrote. He's an author. Wise man. We are a generation that live camped out at the foot of the mountain of God, occasionally braving a hike, but otherwise content to spend our lives gazing up in wonder. I can't do it. I genuinely believe that God is desperate for a generation that will climb the mountain and refuse to come back down. I reject the idea that I have to accept seasons of separation. The blood was enough. I can live on the mountain of God. And on the mountain, I can know him. We're all fine with living at the base of the mountain. We won't go up. Is that where you're at right now? Camped out at the base of the mountain of God? I want to talk to you about what's in valleys. Between two mountains is a valley. If it's a long spread, I think they call that a plain, right? In a lot of places, the Bible says that even though you go through the valley, the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of Armageddon, anybody into reading that? Armageddon takes place in a valley. Everything good is on a mountain. You can see the kingdom. This is where God is. He wants you to come up the mountain of God and you're fine with living in the valley. Not much good happens in a valley. Valleys are the first place to flood. Do you realize, um, uh, Ralph and Vicki here, when you guys hunt, don't you try to get high? You get into a tree stand or you try to get up a hill someplace so you, that you can look over. It's safe. It's safer. You can see better. And you see the enemy is up on the mountain too. And when you're in the valley, he's got you. You are a target. You can't see him. Why do you settle for being in the valley when God is calling you to the mountain? John 16, 12. Would you put that up? 16, 12 and 13. This is Jesus speaking. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you the things to come. This is Jesus living in us. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, will guide you. He will tell you things to come. How well are we listening? But, but God, it's, it's easy 
This is good. Everything's good. I just want to. I just want to go down there. All my friends are down there. I get the status down there. I'm the funny guy down there. They all like me. And you want me to go up this hill that's full of roots and, and it's hard. And I don't know what's up there. What do you do? Where are you at right now? This is a decision that comes across every day. And I'm not talking about good and evil. I'm talking about every single decision you make. There's a fork in the road. Some of them are good and bad. Some of them are harmful. And sometimes we don't make very good choices because we have free will. And we like it. We get all comfortable with what's going on. We don't really want to find out what God has for us because we're comfortable. We're at the base of the mountain and things aren't that bad. They could be a little bit better. And like Michael said in his little writing there, um, you know, every once in a while we'll take a little hike. But we just go a little ways and we're tired and it's hard and we want to get back down the mountain where all of our friends are and everything's good there. What if he said, take off your shoes and go uphill? Are you kidding me? Now, Abby doesn't wear shoes very often. She'd probably be all right. Now he's actually asking you to give up some comfort for him. And he will guide you, take you by the hand, and walk you along, and hold you up with his righteous right hand. We're not very good at it. Here's the thing. We're not alone on this journey, this fork in the road. We're not alone. And we don't actually seek the advice of the person that's holding us up with his righteous right hand. We know what's best for us, right? This is all good. Whatever you're thinking about in your mind, it's all good. It's good. It's comfortable. And he's trying to tug you one way and you're pulling away. You want to jump in the puddles. You want to jump down off the curb. You don't want to step on a crack because it'll break your mother's back. Or something like that. Did you tell him that? Abby, please get ready. I want to get these people out of here so they can actually go for a hike. We don't take direction very well. And the wisest creator of the world is trying to guide you. I want you to ask him. I want you to talk to him. I want you to tell him your fears. Tell him you don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to sacrifice anything for you because I like it. You can tell him. Just like you can tell a parent when the kids walk along, but Dad, I want to jump off of that. I don't want to step on a crack. I want to jump in the puddle. I want to get muddy. I want to get dirty. And you're stopping me from all these things that I like. Do you think he knows best? Did you know best with your kids? Hey, puddles are a blast. And we all want to do it. But if God is trying to take you over these problems, get you around them, lead you in a path that's much, much better, why do we resist it so much? This will tell you right here. And we don't seek it enough. We don't ask God. We don't talk to God. Why do we go to him last? You know, when things are all good and you're making decisions on your own, how, how often do you open that up and read? How often do you get your Bible out? Now, when you come to a fork in the road, it'd be a pretty good time to open up your Bible, wouldn't it? But a lot of times we wait until we've made the wrong choice, the wrong path, then we're in a crisis, and then we say, why, God, why? He didn't lead you down some of these paths, and you know he didn't. 
They were your own choice. Why didn't you ask him at the fork in the road? Why didn't you seek him first? When your kids grow up and they get older, I'm gonna look at you. This is what you get for sitting in the front row. And you got some, something to work, work out, a little problem. Do you ask your parents? Next, do, do you ask your parents? <laughs> you know, you go to your parents once in a while, you get to be a certain age where you realize, there's my signal, you realize they do know best. A loving, caring parent knows best. I was at an age once where I thought my parents were the stupidest people on this earth. They didn't know nothing. They were old. Why don't you ask your heavenly father right from the beginning and don't reject his answer? Isaiah 41, 10. Everybody knows this, and I want you to leave this place with it today. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do you think that if you go down a path God's sending you down, he's going to let you fail? You ever been asked the question, if you could do anything knowing that you wouldn't fail, what would you go for? Money? Pleasure? Happiness? Or would you shoot for health for my children? Well-being for my friends? Remember our, our Christmas list? I wanted you to rewrite them all. Where are you at right now? What fork are you coming to? Who are you asking? Bottom line is, he tells us that he's with us. He is the wisest counsel ever. We need to ask him first. We need to seek him out. And we need to try to climb the mountain of God. This is where you can see the kingdom. This is where you can actually be with God. This is where the light shines the best. This is where you can see the enemy. He wants us on the mountain, and we're all happy with the valley. I want you guys to start to pick the mountain. Go for the unknown if it's his will. If he's telling you to do it, go for it, because you are not alone.
Why do you think there's a fork in the path? You guys have walked down the same path for so long and never knew there was a fork in the road. All of a sudden, there's, there's now a fork. What's, what's this all about? Why, why am I being called to go this way when we've always done this? This is, this is good. Happiness here. Where, where's this all about? Looks like somebody just made that. And you're being called. You're getting this, this nudge to go in this place that you've never been before. And you're scared. You're not alone. How about if we take somebody else with us? Like our children, our family members, co-workers, neighbors. You're not going to go up this path all by yourself. First and foremost, you have the Lord holding you up with his righteous right hand, keeping you on top of the curb. And will you turn around and tell all any of those people that you saw down on that other path, come on, take them with you. You know, you stood there at the fork and said, but these are my friends. I like it here. Have you ever thought about taking them with you? You think you're going to go off on this path and climb the mountain of God all by yourself. You're not alone and you can take anybody with you you want. And most of the time they're just holding you back. You can actually live with God on top of the mountain and never come back down. Fear not, for he is with you. Put up my summary slide, will you, Josh? How about that? Isaiah says, fear not. Seek guidance at the fork. The mountain is harder, but better. The valley can be temporary. The Lord is with you. Why won't you take a chance? Go up the mountain. Too hard? Scared? Rough? What's stopping you? from going down that path that he's trying to take you by the hand and lead you. We've all had children that wouldn't go a certain way and we're trying to pull them that way and they are screaming and throwing a hissy fit. Do you still say hissy fit? I think my mom used to say that. That's what we do. We throw a hissy fit because we're all comfortable. We like it just the way it is. It's the, the known. I know what's going to happen. This is telling you to go up the mountain. And we're not doing a very good job at this. You don't have to be afraid, but be afraid for some of the people that are down the path that you want to go down. Let's pray. God, help us along. Steer us. Guide us. Take us by the hand. Walk with us along the curb. And when you say to turn left, I want to trust you. Fear not, for he is with us. God, I, I need that to sink in. I don't want to be complacent. I want to live with you on top of the mountain. 
And I want to stay there. God help us along. In Jesus' name we leave this place. Amen.